بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد رسول الله. I begin with the name of Allah. All praise belongs to Allah. I may peace and blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad for he is the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. الحمد لله. So we've been talking about speech, al-kalam. And one kind of speech is al-jumla al the nominal sentence. We talked about that in the previous lesson. A nominal sentence is a noun that's followed by another noun. And the second noun attributes an action to the first noun. Hopefully that's clear to you at this point. Now every single jumla ismiya is made up of a mubtada, a subject, and a khabar, a predicate. The subject is the main topic of the sentence. The khabar is the information that you're giving about that subject. The example we always go back to is al-mu'minu sabur. The believer is patient. Saburun. The believer is the subject. That's what we're talking about. What about him? Sabur. That's the khabar. That's the information that we're imparting about him. The believer, subject, patient, predicate. Now, we left the last lesson on a cliffhanger. We said that this is true. However, we have to amend this definition a bit. Because there's something we haven't mentioned that needs to be mentioned. Particularly about al-khabar, the predicate. There's some more details here. And we're going to talk about that in this lesson, inshallah ta'ala. God willing. Let's go through some examples first. Al-imamu hakim. Al-imamu hakim. Maybe you don't know what this means. But you can still figure out it's a jumla ismiya. How so? Al-imam. Al-flam, noun. Hakimun. Danween, noun. You have a noun. Followed by another noun. This is very likely a jumla ismiya, a nominal sentence. And that's what it is. Now, what does this mean? Al imam. The imam. It means a few things depending on the context. Usually we say the imam of a mosque, the one who leads the prayers, the one who does the khutbah on Friday. That's the imam. Hakim. Hakim means wise. Someone who knows what to say, when to say it, what to do, when to do it. He's wise. He knows a thing or two about a thing or two. Al-Imam hakim the Imam is wise, as we say in English. This is a Jumla Ismiya. Very simple. One noun, another noun. The second noun is attributing an action to the first noun. We've seen examples like this in the previous lesson. Here's another sentence. Al-Imamu Fasih. Al-Imamu Fasih. Al-Imam, we already know what this means. Fasih. What does that mean? Well, even if we don't know what it means, it has a tanween, it must be a noun as well. So this must be a jumla ismiya altogether. The Imam. What about him? Fasih. Now what does Fasih mean? If you look it up in the dictionary, fa sad ha you get the word Eloquent. Maybe you'll see articulate. The imam, eloquent. In English, the imam is eloquent. Fasih means when someone speaks very clearly. It's not confusing. You know exactly what he's saying as he says it. Again, this is Jumla Ismiya because the second noun is being attributed to the first noun. The act of being eloquent is attributed to al imam. And here's another example. Al-Imamu Sharif. Al-Imamu Sharif. Al-Imam, we already know what this means at this point. The Imam. Sharif. Even if you don't know what it means, has a tanween, it must be a noun. So the Imam is Sharif, whatever Sharif means. Look it up in the dictionary. You get Sheen, Ra, Fa. These are the three root letters. If you look it up, you'll find the word Noble. The imam is noble, meaning he's respected in his community. That's what sharif means. So again, a jumla ismiya. The second noun is being attributed to the first noun. Hopefully this all makes sense at this point. And you'll notice that all of these words here, hakim, fasih, sharif, these are all on the fa'il pattern. Fa'il is a common pattern in the Arabic language for 
nouns. We talked about this in the sort of course, in the morphology course, way back. So we have Hakim, Fasih, Sharif. They're on the Fa'id pattern. They must be a noun. So this is all good. Hopefully this all makes sense. Here's a curveball for you. What does this mean here? Hmm? What does this mean? Al-Imam means the Imam. We've seen this word already several times. What about Jalasa? Jalasa. Let's say you don't know what this word means. Is it a noun? Well, there's no alif lam. There's no tanween. There's no tamar buta. This doesn't look like a noun. It's not a particle. Particles like min, bi, li, fi. This is not one of those. And so this is a noun because of the alif lam. This is a verb. What's happening here? We said a jumla ismiya is a noun followed by another noun. And that second noun attributes an action to the first noun. That's not what's happening here. What does jalasa mean? Jalasa means he sat down. So we can translate this as the imam, you can say bracket, sat down. The imam sat down. And so we have to amend this definition here. This definition of a jumla ismiya, we have to add something to it. The jumla ismiya, the nominal sentence, is a noun followed by another noun or something functioning as a noun that attributes an action to the first noun. So all the other examples, we had a noun here. And it was very easy to spot, like the word fasih, eloquent, articulate. This is a noun, and it's attributing an action to that first noun. So it's a jumla ismiya. Very simple. The way that a jumla ismiya works, it's usually a noun followed by another noun with the second noun attributing an action to the first noun. So here you would expect a noun, but there's a verb instead. It's as if this verb is the substitute for what should be a noun. And so this is almost functioning like a noun. And so this is the muptada. This is the subject matter. This is what we're talking about in the sentence, the imam. What about him? This. Now this, you would expect a noun, but it's not a noun. Eh, it's good enough. It's a verb. It's functioning like a noun. So this is the khabar. And so from that, we understand that the predicate isn't always a noun. The predicate, the khabar, it could be a verb. Al-imamu jalasa. The imam, he sat down. This is a jumla ismiya. I'll give you another example. Al khatibu sa'im. Al khatibu sa'im. What do we see here? This is a noun because of the alif lam. Even if we don't know what it means, it's a noun. Sa'imun. Sa'imun. Tanween. This is a noun as well. So this is a jumla ismiya. We have two nouns. And if you don't know what these words mean, you look them up. You look up the root letters. What are the root letters? Al khatib. Al khatib has a kha. You look it up in the dictionary. What do we get? Al khatibu means the lecturer. You can say the speaker. The one who speaks. Notice khatib is like khutbah. We probably know that word. Khutbah. That's the lecture or the sermon that they give on Fridays. Khatib is the one who gives the lecture. Oftentimes it's used for that specific Friday sermon, but it can refer to any sermon, any lecture that someone gives. Al Khatibu, the lecturer. Sa'im, what does Sa'im mean? Fasting. So you can say the lecturer is fasting. This is a Jumla Ismiya. This is the Mubtada. This is the subject matter. The lecturer, what about him? Sa'im. This is the Khabar. The predicate. This is the information that we're imparting about the lecturer. And again, this is a jumla ismiya, very simple. We have a noun, we have another noun. The second noun is attributing an action to the first noun. But we can also say, Al khatibu sama. Al khatibu sama. What's the difference? Al khatibu is also the lecturer. But we would expect a noun here. 
This does not look like a noun. Hmm? No aliflam, no tanween, no tamerbuto. It's not a particle. It's not li, it's not bi, min, ila, fi, ala. It's not one of these words. It's not a noun, it's not a particle. So this must be a verb. Again, a jumla ismiya is a noun followed by another noun or something functioning as a noun that attributes an action to the first noun. So it's as if you would expect a noun here. If I go up to you as a classical Arab and I say, al-khatibu, and I pause, you would say, the lecturer is what? Give me some noun. Give me something. And instead I say, sama, he fasted. That's what sama means. The lecturer, he fasted. As a classical Arab, I would accept this. I would anticipate saw him. I would expect a noun. But you're giving me a verb. I'll take that. That's fine. I'll take that. Something functioning as a noun. So this is the mubtada, the subject matter, the lecturer. What about him? This information here. He fasted. The khabar. And in English, we usually translate this as the lecturer fasted. We take out that he. Here's another example. So we talked about al-imam, al-khatib. Now we have al-muadhinu qari' Al-muadhinu qari' Al-muadhin means the caller to prayer. Sounds kind of convoluted in English. It's essentially a muadhin, the one who calls to pray. The muadhin. Now what about him? Qari' Qari' is a reciter. Someone who recites. And usually when we say qari', especially in a religious context, we're talking about someone who recites the Qur'an. Someone who recites very well. So the caller to prayer, the muadhin, is a reciter. As you can imagine, usually the muadhin, he's also a Qur'an reciter. Assuming he has a nice voice, assuming he studied tajweed, he's probably going to be the muadhin and a reciter of the Qur'an. So al-muadhinu qari'. This is a jumla ismiya. We have one noun, alif lam, another noun, danween. The second noun is attributing an action to the first noun. So this is the mubtada, the subject matter. And this is the khabar, the predicate. Pretty simple. Hopefully it's pretty simple at this point. So we can say al muadhinu qari, or we can say Al Muadhinu Qura'a. Al Muadhin, again, the caller to prayer, the one who calls people to pray. What does Qura'a mean? No Alif Lam, no Tanween, no Tamar Buta. It's not a noun. It's not a particle. It's not bi, li, fi, min, ila, ala, an. All these particles. We learn about those in a, in a later lesson. It's not a particle. It's not a noun. It's a verb. Qura'a means he recited. He recited. So we're saying the caller to prayer, he recited. And in English, we usually take out that he. The caller to prayer, the muadhin recited. So again, this is a verb. And yet, this is the khabar, the predicate. This is the mubtada the subject, what we're talking about in the sentence, what are we saying about him? Qura'a, he recited. This is the khabar. So this is something that's almost functioning as a noun because you would expect the noun. Because if I say to you, the caller to prayer, the muadhin, the first thing that comes to your mind is you're going to give me information. Maybe he's fasih, eloquent. Maybe he's hakim, wise. Maybe he's sharif, noble. You're going to give me some word, probably a noun, that gives me information about this muadhin. But instead I say, Qura'a, he recited. Okay, I'll take that. I'll take that. That's fine. Something functioning as a noun. This is still a jumla ismiya. Again, the predicate isn't always a noun. That's just something you have to keep in mind. So in summary, we have kalam, speech. One kind of speech is al-jumlatul ismiya, the nominal sentence. It's a noun followed by another noun. That first noun is called the subject, mubtada. The second noun is called the khabar, the predicate. And sometimes the predicate, it's something functioning as a noun. 
like a fa'al in the examples that we've seen, a verb. Now, whether it's a noun or a verb, it's attributing an action to the first noun. But the key takeaway here is that the khabar, the predicate, isn't always a noun. It could be a fi'al. In a later lesson, we'll see it can be an entire sentence on its own. Just something to keep in mind when we're talking about the jumla ismiya. And going back to that first example we used, al-mu'minu, sabur, the believer is patient. This is a very simple jumla ismiya. Mubtada, khabar, the believer. What about him? Patient. We have one noun, another noun. But we can also say something else. We can also say, Al-mu'minu sabara. Sabara. Al-mu'minu sabara. This means the believer was patient. Sabara means he was patient. So here, al-mu'minu sabur, the believer is patient. Noun followed by another noun. Al-mu'minu sabara. The believer was patient, a noun, followed by a verb, but this is still the mubtada, and this is the khabar, the predicate, the information that we're saying about al-mu'minu, the believer. Alhamdulillah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ala ushabihi wa ala atba'ihi hatta yawm al-qiyamati wa sallam tasliman kathira.